Harold Zeta here. Welcome back to more Let's Play Duel Masters. In the last episode, we got started in the water uh, campaign, and fighting light kind of stinks when you're water, which really stinks when the only two things you've fought so far are light. <laughs> but alas, in this episode, we're here in the library to fight Cindy or something. I don't know. Want a duel? Sure. Sure. But yeah, right now we're just kind of in the beginnings. We've done one mandatory duel, so this is only the second mandatory duel. Because, like, duels so far with water have been very lengthy. <laughs> I, don't want you, I don't really want to call water, like, a stall -y civilization, but it does have an unfortunate result. Uh, when you don't have... When, when you're up against somebody else who also has similar vibes of stalling. But the thing is, light just kind of does it better, is the problem. Light has stronger blockers than water, usually. Oh. You get two spiral gates, sure! Can I do anything yet? No? Okay. Well, at least she can't do anything yet, either. What a what an opening, huh? All right, well I got a fish out. She's probably going to just spiral gate it because what else is she gonna do? Try and bait out the other spiral gate. Okay. Let's hope she only has the two of them. Okay. Now that that's done, let's get out Aquanite. Draw cards, sure. Alright. Now, this is a setup I'm a little more comfortable with, I think. Alright, we got an Aqua Jolt around the field, but that's why it's good that I have Revolver Fish out. You got Sea Mine out now. But I could put out Sea Mine as well. But I think Stone Sword is better first because it's stronger. Alright. Alright, so this will kill both of them. However, the benefit with Aquanite is that it just goes back to my hand and I can resummon it. So that's the benefit of Reanimate. Which is what it's called in the Matt's version. I don't know if it has an actual name here, but. That's that's the whole gist of it. It's one of the benefits. It's based. It's, I feel like it might not be as useful here in some situations, but it's still useful in a general sense. Because it basically means like you can feel more comfortable losing creatures because you just get it back. And it's worth noting that it also applies to like if a darkness creature like just disintegrates it, you know? Stonesword will attack first, you'll probably block the Sea Mine, yep. And that will kill Sea Mine and mean that Aqua... Aqua Soldier can be my little special boy and take out a shield. Alright, so fighting water with water, much better than fighting water with light. 
no, fighting light with water. Words are hard. Okay, what's teleportation? I don't even know. Don't recognize it. Oh boy. That's a biggie. What the heck do, they, do you do? Just a devil breaker. Okay. Well, huh. Don't really need this. I might might just be able to win here though. Is the thing. Let's see. I mean, she could have a spiral gate in her shields. We don't know. Or she's got a burst shot. Wait, what? What? Oh, she didn't... Did she not use it? Maybe she didn't use it. Because... That would have killed Aqua Soldier. It also would have killed her Aqua Jolter. So I guess she didn't use it? For some reason? Huh. I mean, it would have been the smarter thing to do. Because now it means that she dies. But okay. Maybe she's not a true water user because she's got red hair. Then again, she was part fire, so. Alright. We defeated Cindy. Cindy Vortex. Alright. Crystal Lancer. Two of them, in fact. Interesting. This is an evolution creature that goes on top of liquid people. Double breaker that can't be blocked. Incredibly useful. Will be very useful against those fucking light problem attic people. And if I have two of them, that's awesome. And that means it's also beneficial to have a bunch of liquid people like Aqua Soldier, Aqua Knight, Aqua Shooter, etc, etc. It's also... <laughs> It's funny to me, because, like, I didn't realize that this thing is, like, centaur-like at first. Because, like, it's got, like, the big, like, orange and purple, like, swirly arm things. The orange one is covering up the second half of its body. So I didn't realize that it was, like, centaur-like at first for a while. But I understand that now. But, yeah, those are cards I want in my deck instantly. Just instant transmission putting those things in. They are useful as fuck. I absolutely want them. The Water Monk's looking for the best water duelist. You can find him at the mall. He's going shopping for water duelists. <laughs> I'll buy you for five dollars. I'm, I'm, I'm worth at least six dollars. I could see arguments for seven. You should find that monk at the mall. Okay. So, what fire things am I going to get rid of in case of, in this case? Probably Immortal Baron. Actually, I'm going to get rid of a Dude Joe. For now, I'm going to stick with fire, because, like, I don't know what other thing I'm going to use. Throw in a couple of light things, I guess, maybe? I don't know. Ultimately depends. Where the heck is Crystal Lancer? Ah, oh, right here. Sometimes it's just hard to notice what cards are what. <laughs> So yeah, so Crystal Lancer goes on top of Liquid People. Let's see how many we, of those we even have. We got three Aqua Jolters. We got three Aqua Shooters, so that's six. Seven, eight for Aqua Knight. Nine, ten for Aqua Soldier. So, out of our 40 cards, ten of them are Liquid People. So, that's pretty darn good. So yeah. Crystal Lancer, that's how we're going to get past white people now. 
That's what we need to hope for. And that will be beneficial. Still won't beat out an heiress, per se, because that's 9,000. But that's a situation where using blockers to defend Crystal Lancer will be incredibly important. Point being, we're going to be... I'm in, I'm in a feeling in a much better position now. Now that I got those two. Definitely some luck, but... I'll take it, because I really needed it. The game took pity on me and gave me some good cards. Because, yeah. Woof. Fighting Light was... It really is just a problem of, like, the blocker situation. What? In order to get past blockers, you need something that's strong enough. Water just doesn't have that. This is the one I was telling you about. Light vouches for your skill, but I seek an extraordinary duelist. I'm good and I can prove it. I've been practicing for a long time. All right. I will test you. Also, I was thinking recently, Knight as a character is apparently from the original Duel Masters anime. I don't know who voiced him in the Duel Masters anime. However, if it is the same actor in this game as it is in the anime, there is a strong likelihood that it's not actually the Corkery who's voicing Knight, like I randomly predicted, guessed. So in that regard, I don't know who Bill Corkery is voicing. However, my next best guess are all the monks, because the thing about Bill Corkery, he voices Espio the Chameleon from Sonic Heroes, and that voice was like, really deep and rough, and like, that would not. And that kind of fits the monks, you know? The vibe is similar enough. So, like, I could see it being the monks, too. It could be either or. For all I know, maybe it is not the same voice actor, and maybe they're voiced by the same people. Who knows? I don't. Let's get out of here. That'll be a good thing to start with. Alright, he's manaing an Aqua Knight. And he's getting an Aqua Hulkus. What does Aqua Hulkus do again when you summon? Draw the card, okay. Yeah. One of water one of water's most common things is just being able to Just being able to... Aqua Deformer, what is that? I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. Uh, it's being able to, like, get cards. That's usually the... That's usually what gets considered... What makes people... The official... Dual Masters players who are good at the game. That's usually what makes it... Who, who know the game well. From what I've heard, they say water is the best civilization. In like a terms of a tier list situation. But A, that might not apply to this early in Dual Masters run. Because this is only... I, I looked it up. Apparently like the deck and decks and expansions that this game uses. There's only a couple hundred from the very first... Uh... The, ver the first four expansions of the game. So, uh, it's missing a whole bunch is the point. I'll let that go through. Do, 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 do. Do I want to put Crystal Lancer on my blocker? I don't think I do. However, I can put it on Aqua Soldier. Why did they turn him from a green creature into a blue creature? I kind of always liked that Crystal Lancer was like all green. And they just made him blue here. Also, the water spiral harms are a lot less impressive in as, in this model. Oh, Crystal Lancer, murder! 
Mr. Horse. Uh, it actually doesn't matter if I use Aqua Shooter here because of the double breaker situation. Don't have a spiral gate. Don't have a spiral gate. Don't have a spiral gate. Okay, I, I still don't know what teleportation does. None, none of these guys have used it thus far. Okay. I might get a good card from this, so... Let's see. Dinosaur King Coral or Revolver Fish. Eh. Probably makes the most sense to do that. Alright. Crystal Lancer can't be blocked, so this makes the most sense. Unfortunately, thanks to King Coral, I can't kill you this turn, but it wouldn't have made anything anyway, because... Uh... I don't know if I've fully explained this before, but it's not like there's six shields and the si and once the sixth shield is done, then you win. There are only five shields. So as a double breaker, if there was only one shield left, Crystal Lancer would only break that one shield and then you would still need to hit them again to ki actually kill them. So that's kind of how that works. I guess it was always kind of like sort of implied but, like, I never really specifically stated it until now. Because it wasn't always super relevant until now, anyway. But, yeah, like... Crystal... A, a double breaker can only break two shields. Or one thing. And, like... So, you need to think of the shields and the actual player character as completely separate. Is, the, is basically the point. Anyways, either way, I win next turn unless you somehow get rid of... Uh, Crystal Lancer, which it didn't seem like they did because they didn't Spiral Gate him. And that, my friends, is the power of Crystal Lancer. Take us home. This is why I wanted this guy immediately. You can already see how useful he is as a double breaker who is unblockable. Like, yeah, very strong, very worth having. In fact, I don't think there's even any change between this Crystal Lancer and the one that I'm used to. I think they're both 6 mana. Uh, I think they're both 6 mana evolution creatures that deal about the same amount of damage and are double breakers that are unblockable. Mm. Yeah, I think so, yeah. I'm wondering, I, th I know there are some water cards that either are in the game or Matt added to the game that make other liquid people also unblockable, but I don't think that applies to Crystal Lancer. I don't know. It is interesting, your dueling style. It resembles another in your family. My family? You mean... Her family history is not important at this point. You must tell her of her quest. Of course. Rebecca... When you duel, do you sense the presence of the creatures that you summon? Yes. I've tried to find out more, but no one seems to know. Those creatures are real. Your cards can channel them, but they do not enter our world. However, the temple has a stronger connection that allows them to... She does not need to know the purpose of the temple, only that it must be protected. Protected? From whom? Recently, the widow tried to seize control of the temple. Her attempt failed and several creatures escaped into our world, including a water creature. The card that would bind it was shattered into nine pieces. Without the card, the creature cannot be controlled. So I need to recover the nine card pieces? Yes. I can give you the first one, but the rest you must find yourself. I feel like there is a... My aunt is waiting for me in the park. I feel like there is a vibe um, with, like, there's kind of been, like, s 
slightly implied, but not really explicitly stated until vaguely right then. That, like, there's a separation between, like, the human realm and the creature realm. And I guess in this, only certain duelists, like, the five protagonists, are actually aware that the cards that they're dealing with are representing actual creatures in a different world. Everyone else thinks they're just playing a, diff a fun little game, I guess. There's, there's a weird vibe to it all. And I don't think this game is necessarily the best at explaining and exploring it. <laughs> but that's not really what it's trying to do. And I don't think it's this game that made it up. I think that's just a vibe with... This, I think that's like a lore element of Duel Masters just inherently to begin with. Anyways, hi, Ant. Rebecca, how nice to see you. Tell me, do you remember who gave you your first deck? Of course, Aunt Vivian. It was you. Come, show me what you have learned since then. Oh, we're, we're actually fighting you. Okay. Aunt Vivian. Vivian Widow. Okay. Sure. Ah, uh, I don't know how this is gonna go. <laughs> this is the big bad, and <laughs> we're just fighting her. Probably not going to be as hard as what would theoretically be the final boss. I don't even know if she is the final boss. It's just an assumption. Uh, but she is a darkness user, so... Bring on out that marrow ooze, I guess. Yeah, I saw you have it. You can't hide things from me, Aunt Vivian. Aunt Vivi. Hmm... Got a lot of three turn summons, but I think it's useful to... Alright, sure, go ahead. Marrow Ooze will die, I'm pretty certain, when it hits a shield. So, that at least gets rid of the creature. Oh, look, he got another one. <laughs> yep, sure. Um, okay. I get he got a blocker... I think Phantom Fish probably makes more sense. In terms of, like, just protecting myself. However, as a Darkness user, the problem here then becomes... I... What, the one thing that I know for sure when I'm fighting against something with darkness... I see that death smoke. You're gonna use the death smoke. This is it. This is what, what it is when you're dealing with darkness. You pretty much under no circumstances want to ever heavily rely on one thing. Your strategy needs to be very, very versatile. Essentially. Because of all the slayers and death smokes and all that stuff, there's a lot of ability for the fire civilization to just delete things off of the board. So pretty much under any under no circumstance do you ever want to become complacent or like rely on solely one thing. Like this against somebody like her is the is the reason to not like rely on somebody like Crystal Lancer, for example. Like, Crystal Lancer would not be as good here. Because, in theory, it would basically be like, she could just Death Smoke it. She could just, like, delete it from the battlefield. Granted, Death Smoke would require it to be untapped, but... She could also get a Terror Pit and just delete it from existence. You know? That sort of thing. That's the kind of thing that would happen. So, like, when you're fighting darkness, when I try to fight darkness, like, that's just the ultimate vibe I kind of have to go with. It's just don't rely on things like that. Okay. Yeah, I saw that coming. Ooh, 
what is this? Who are you? Jack Viper. On your other darkness creature's destruction, return it to hand. Okay. Well. Uh. Don't I exactly have a lot I can do. But what I can do is spiral gate that thing. Because that's better than nothing, and I like that I have a Crystal Lancer. Well. I like that I have a Crystal Lancer, but I don't exactly have a water creature that I can use anything with it. Alright, Greg. Alright, you can't death smoke me. And if she death smokes Aqua Soldier, then it just goes back into my hand. Okay, she's not using Grey Balloon to... She, she's using Grey Balloon, but not to, like, do a thing. Alright. This is a weird battle, but it's interesting. Death smoke. All right. Smart thing to do would hit uh, Bork Baron. Yeah. Okay. All right. Ooh. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna kill Gregorian Worm. Because that... That feels good. It means I will still be immune to Death Smoke. And she won't have anything on the field. She's probably gonna summon Zagan here. Okay, who does Zagan do? You're just Double Breaker. Alright. Alright, well, in this regard, I'm gonna summon Revolver Fish, that'll help me. I could've Virtual Trip wired it, but... Eh? Well, actually, hold on. Hold on. If I mana Aquanite... Then I can virtual tripwire. Which would tabs again. And. Well, I guess here's the thing. If I just keep going, I can. I'm worried about what her shield triggers might be. That's what it is. I'm just worried about that. So I think it's better safe than sorry. I just think it's genuinely way better safe than sorry here. Because I don't know what our shield triggers are. They could be anything. And now, I can summon off a shooter. Who will help give me a blocker. Crystal Lancer can hit attack the player. Finally. See? 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 I was right! This is exactly why!
I have two blockers. I'm gonna let this go through, I think. Maybe? Well, she might have a death smoke, though. That's the problem. Fuck it, I'm using revolver fish. Ribbit, ribbit! Okay, you're just making me discard a random card? Sure. That is fine. I can get through that. Aqua Shooter, take us home! We beat the final boss. <laughs> Not really, but like, I assume that she's going to be the final boss. That was a fun fight, though. Sometimes I do like fighting Darkness because it really does force you to, like, not be so over-reliant and be, like, a lot more, like, versatile. Like, in order to mentally fight against Darkness, you have to have a kind of different strategy than you do other... other things. Ooh, we got a Candy Drop! That'll be also very useful against Light, because Candy Drop is unblockable. We haven't seen too much of Candy Drop yet, but trust me, it's very good. We beat Widow, and we only got one... 1,000 points. I feel like we should have gotten, like, 3,000 points, but I guess people don't know her very well yet. She hasn't actually taken over the world. Or whatever the heck she's trying to do. Thank you. Alright. I would say that was a good enough point to end the episode. So, I'm gonna be done for now. After whatever cutscene happens, if there is, even is one, sometimes there isn't. I've always helped your family, have I not, Rebecca? Always. And have I ever asked for anything in return? Never, Aunt Vivian. Well, there is one small thing that you could help me with. Of course, anything. There are some pieces of a water creature card floating about this city. Silly, worthless things. Still, I have a certain fondness for them. Would you be a dear and bring them to me? Excellent. I knew I could count on you. There is an interesting... There's, this is definitely, honestly, one of a very interesting, like, premise for this campaign in particular. Like, this, like, family dynamic. For what the game is and what it can do, like, that is genuinely, like, a little bit, like, ambitious storytelling, relatively. Like, I, I, I like what it's going for. But it's also got the cheesy campiness of, like, everything the rest of the game has to offer, so it's also very funny. <laughs> Alright, next time on Let's Play, Duel Masters, maybe the Librarian can help. So, I'm gonna put Candy Drop in my thing, and end the episode there. So, next time on Let's Play, Duel Masters. Uh... Uh... Wherever the hell Candy Drop is, it's getting added. There it is. It's very indecipherable, especially from a small distance. But yeah, next time! See ya!